Hello, everybody. My name is Chiaki O'Brien. Today, I'd like to introduce you to a Japanese art form called Kumihimo. It is a Japanese braiding and it has a long history. So before we start braiding together, I'd like you to watch some slides. Here we go. Kumihimo, a beautiful Japanese handwork. You see Kumihimo uh, right and left. You can see you can do many different kinds of patterns and designs. The picture in the center is a tool for kumihimo. It's called marudai. You will see this marudai in action at the end of the slides. Let's put our word kumihimo into two. Kumi and himo. Kumi means gather or group in Japanese and himo means cord or thread in Japanese. Kumihimo was influenced by China and Korea. Here is a map of Asia. First, let's look for Japan. Japan is a small country and it's surrounded by ocean. Did you find it? Next, let's look for China. China is a big country. On this map, it's in yellow. And let's look for Korea. Korea is between China and Japan. Did you find those three countries? Now look at the picture on the right. This is a kumihimo from China. And the one on the left, this is a kumihimo from Korea. History of kumihimo. Kumihimo in Japan started 1400 years ago in Asuka Nara period. Kumihimo was used for religious reasons, ceremonies, entertainment, fashion, and furniture. Heian period. Special dyeing technique was developed and used for the Kumihimo thread. Nobles used this as holding their swords holding their picture scrolls, holding their lucky charms. Kamakura and Muromachi period. People also developed new designs and patterns in this period too. Look at the picture on the right. This is an armor. And this reddish orangish cords, those are kumihimo. Next time, when you have a chance to visit Mia Minneapolis Institute of Art, please go to the Japanese section and look for an armor. I believe there is one. Once you find it, please look for kumihimo. I also believe there are picture scrolls at the museum. And once you find them, please look for uh, kumihimo attached to those picture scrolls. Edo period. Samurai carried swords. They used kumihimo to connect their swords to their bodies. After Meiji period, this wooden box on the left is a box for a teacup used for tea ceremonies. 
and the ribbon is kumihimo. Picture on the right. This person is in kimono. Kimono is a national costume of Japan. The kumihimo is on top of this orange sash. It's a good accent. Kumihimo today. This person in kimono has a beautiful black sash and she has a gold kumihimo as an accent. The rest of the pictures are cell phone straps, bracelets, camera strap, ballpoint pens. These are some items that people didn't see 1400 years ago. Here's a video, a marudai, a tool for kumihimo is in action. So let's watch this. So, did you like that video, uh, Marudai was in action? This Kumihimo artist, he was working with probably 20 threads and he made a beautiful bracelet. Now it's time for us to braid. Let's check what's in your kit. You have a bunch of yarn, and a square cardboard with circle on it. So you will cut that out and make a kumihimo disc. Okay. You have keychain and a wooden bead. I like you to prepare a marker or a pencil. A roll of tape and a pair of scissors. First, we are going to cut out and to make a kumihimo disc. So instead of a marudai, the traditional tool, we are going to use as a marudai. This is very portable. This is just a cardboard. You can save cereal boxes and you can make several kumihimo disc, discs out of a cereal box. Uh, the size doesn't so much matter. You can make it smaller like this or bigger. You can also purchase a kumihimo disc like this at a craft store. This one has 32 threads. And today we are making a disc with 12 slits. We are going to work with four strands of yarn. And this, if you are very good at it, if you feel like working with more than four, many yarns, then you need more slits. So that's why this one has 32. Even there are only 12, you can still make a several different patterns. 
And this is a styrofoam, so this is also very light. Uh, also, you probably see square kumihimo discs too. Okay, so pick up your scissors and then we are going to cut along the line. Okay. So please cut it and please be careful using scissors. If you need an adult help, please ask for help. Once you cut it, I like you to make a small hole in the middle. I don't have a good tool for this, so I used <clears throat> scissors like this. So please be careful. And you don't need to have a big hole. After you poked and made a small hole, you can arrange it by putting your pinky or a pencil. After that, we are going to draw lines, 12 of them, and write numbers, 1 through 12. So the lines, we will cut this later. Uh, please draw about quarter inch long. So you can start from 12, draw a line. Right number 12, you can go straight down, draw a line, and six, and between 12 and six, you can make three, and across, you can make nine. Then you can fill the rest of the numbers. Uh, please try your best to have even spaces between each numbers. For now, please don't worry about these arrow marks. I will explain about these later. Once you finish drawing lines and numbers, we are going we are going to cut these short lines with scissors, all 12 of them. Then you have your kumihimo discs. So like I said, you can make several kumihimo discs out of a cereal box. You can make some for them are uh, for your families or fam uh, friends, and you can teach them how to kumihimo. Okay, now you can put this aside and let's choose a color. I mean, choose two colors you want for your kumihimo project today. You need two strands to a uh, same color and then two more strands, same color. So I have one blue, light blue, and two, two light blues. Okay, I have two strands of light blue. I'm going to pick the second color. I'm going to do red, one, and two. So total of four strands. So please pick your colors. When you are getting used to braiding, you can choose three colors, four strands, or all different colors, four strands. For example, I have one I braided with three colors. Okay, I used two colors, 
same braiding. It looks different. Also, the thickness of the yarn makes a little difference too. Once you braid, your yarn, today you have about five feet long each strand. This will shrink about quarter size, quarter length, shorter, or maybe 4.5 shorter. So if you want to make your own from now on, you can think about how long do you want and then you have to prepare the yarn four times longer or 4.5 times longer yarn okay please keep that in mind once you have four strands please put all four ends together just one side And then check the other end. If there is one or uh, two yarns are really long, you can trim those long ones. Okay. Please fold your yarn in half, all of them. And here is my half point. I put a finger, okay? Next, we will make a knot. If you like to make a bracelet, this loop, after you knot, you have a loop. This needs to be big enough for the bead to put it through, okay? If you are making a keychain, the size of the loop doesn't so much matter. Only for people who are making bracelet using this wooden bead. Okay, so this was my half point. And then make a knot. Check the size of the loop. and then not. Okay, so now you have eight strands here. Pick up your desk and a loop and a knot go through from the front side to the back. Only you want to see the loop and the knot and hold the knot with your fingers. Okay, this is your back of your disc and look at the front. Okay, and let's put 12 away from you. And now we are going to set the yarn on the disc. We are going to start one color at a time. I'm starting with red. Take one and then bring it to 12 and insert. Next red goes to one. Two more red. Let's bring it to six. Last one goes to seven. Okay, now next color, there are four of them. One goes to three. Second one goes to four. Third one goes to nine. Last one goes to 10.
make sure the yarns are completely touching the disc. So it looks so flat. So no loose yarn like this. Okay, if you do, please pour. Also, if you see something, uh, the yarns are crossing like this. Here, let's fix it. And let's have clean triangles to start. Are you ready? So as you see, my hand is away from the back. Let's make sure before we start braiding, you know which is right and left. I am going to say right and left many times from now on. Right and left. Make sure also your 12 is away from you. Okay, this is my 12. Now you can see my top color is red. So I'm going to start with red. So you're looking only this color. Don't worry about the second color. Okay, just red. Right side of top red, off. Go down, right side of these reds, so which is five, insert. Do you see a red chicken foot on my disc? That's what you want to see on your disc. Whatever the color you have, you want to see a chicken foot. Now let's go left side of red. Off, go up, go to the left side of the red. So I'm gonna insert this to 11. It's time to turn the disc. I like to turn my disc this way, clockwise. Okay, so please don't turn your discs yet. I'm going to turn my disc right, clockwise. You can turn your discs counterclockwise, this way too. But once you decide which direction you want to turn, you need to keep turning the same direction. You cannot do back and forth. I like to turn this, my disc, clockwise, so I put arrow marks as reminders. So if you like to do that, you can draw arrow marks. So once you decide to go clockwise, you need to keep turning clockwise until you finish this certain project. For your next one, you can turn the other direction. Okay? Okay, so let's go to the next color. I worked with red, so now I turned. Now I need to work with blue. Same thing, right side, off, go down to the right of blues, which is two, and I insert. I have a blue chicken foot. Now, go left, left one is off, go up, left side of the blue and insert. Time to turn the disc. So I'm working red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. Right side off, down right side of reds, a chicken foot, left side, off, go up to the left of the red, and insert. 
turn the desk. You keep go going, you are braiding. And sometimes you need to arrange your jellyfish nice and straight. So you are braiding. If you go another five minutes or so, you will see braided coming out from this hole. Okay. So what we are making is called 8Z spiral. 8Z spiral. There is also called 8S spiral. So this one, 8Z, do you see the line going this way? Okay. The other one, 8S, goes to different direction. So this is 8Z. Okay, I put my desk while I was talking. So for example, when you want to take a break, you need to set this aside and then you came back and then you will say, which color do I start with? I cannot remember. So look at the desk. Do you see my blue is under red? My blue is under red. So I need to start working with blue, which is under. Okay. And now I know I need to start with blue, but which side? This doesn't matter. Whichever the side you like. Okay. So the bottom color, blue, same thing, right side off go to right, a blue chicken foot. Left, off, go up to the left, insert. Turn the disc, same direction you've been turning. Right side off, go to right to make a chicken foot. Left side off, go up, left to the red. So keep going and you can go all the way or you can maybe want a little shorter one, then you can stop whenever you feel like, oh, this is enough. If you decided to go all the way, it will tell you, one of the yarns will tell you it's done. Maybe one of them it's shorter, so you cannot even go up or down to insert. It's too short, you cannot insert. So that's the time you need to finish. So even the shorter one, you just take this off, from the desk okay you don't need to you can please watch because you still need to braid once you finish it will look like this so this is the loop and the knot it was back of the desk and then this is the where you finished braiding and you might have long tail that you can trim if you like please leave about two to three inch long from where you've stopped braiding if you are going to make a bracelet you need to put a bead please cut a tape not so long and put this and yarn together with the tape.
and then put this end through the bead. Okay, just this is the easier to thread it. That's why I put the tape and I put all eight strands together and slide a bead for now and then make a knot, the same knot we made at the beginning where you stopped braiding. You can remove a tape. If you want to trim your end, you can. Okay, so now you have your bracelet. Put the bead and knot through the loop you made at the beginning. Maybe for some of you, if you braid it all the way long, you can maybe wrap uh, your bracelet twice around your wrist. Okay. Okay, here's my bracelet. If you want to make a keychain, you still can leave the bead if you like. And what I use is a short thread to connect the loop and either this ring or this one, like a U, connect with the short string. I found that it is a little hard to put the ring through the loop directly, um, but you can try if you like. Okay, so this will be your keychain. So that's Kumihimo. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please do with your friends, families. You just need a piece of cardboard, like cereal box kind of uh, paper, and some yarns. Now I like to show you one knotting. And this knotting is called Kano Musubi. So this is a Kano Musubi that I made. Do you see a kind of square and the cross in the back? Okay, cross and a square. This is a Japanese letter character, square and a cross is together. This is a uh, kanau. Kanau means dream come true. So this is a very good character and this is the kanao musubi. We call it kano musubi, but this came from this letter, kanao. I'm going to show you how to knot this. It's really, uh, it's hard. We need to practice many times. And you also want to have at least two feet long cord. So once you braid it from the kit, the yarn is only five feet long. Um, this won't be uh, two feet long when you finish braiding. So you can use something else like bulky yarn, macrame cord, uh, or maybe a shoelace, something about two feet long to start with. And then once you're used to braiding, uh, knotting, you can try shorter. You can braid your own and then make a lucky charm like this.
Okay. I'm going to use this. If you like to make a keychain, then you can put this beforehand. And it bring it to the half point. Even though if you're not using the keychain, you still want your cord to be half, fold in half. Okay, I am going to set it for braiding, uh, knotting. Okay. And you need uh, two or three tapes to secure your cord. I'm going to put this on this and secure it with the tape. So I have A and B. A and B. For now, B stays here. A goes on top of B and go to the other side. You want to have a circle here. Okay. A here, this one, goes back to A side. Going under, under. B and came back to A side. Now you still have a circle and a twist here. Okay, this is B, this is A. A is going back to the other side. Under B, under B and You want to make another circle here and secure A with a tape. So I have circle one, circle B. This is B. B is going under circle two. And then this wants to come up from here, circle one. And push everything to the right. And then this goes in to the circle two from the top. And then pull a little bit. You can remove tapes now. Then arrange by pulling this top ring here and A and B. Until you see a nice square. Now I see a square. I think that's good. And then back, I see a cross. So this is a Kano Musubi. If you have still long cord, you can make another one here or maybe in triple. So please try. And this is Kano Musubi. Musubi means nodding in Japanese. So congratulations. And you learned Japanese art form, Kumihimo.
braiding and kano musubi, kano knotting. Thank you so much and keep braiding knotting. Goodbye.